We're here at the Cannabis World Congress Business Expo, and we have found Canologics. Now, what does this mean? We're going to find out a little bit more. There are people behind this, and the people that I'm here with today are Kay and Jane. And Kay has an incredible story, a story of illness and a story of healing. And it all has to do with our beautiful plant, cannabis. So Kay, welcome, and thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Uh, tell us what's going on. Where were you in, in your medical um, situation prior to cannabis? What brought you to cannabis, and, and what happened, obviously, afterward? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited. Um, it's been quite a journey. Uh, I've been sick most of my life, but I, I didn't really know what, what was wrong. Um, I grew up in a conservative household, so it was never a, a conversation I was ever a part of. Cannabis, as all, all I knew was the education was under the D.A.R.E. program, and that was it. So, just say no. Yeah, just say no to drugs. I had no idea about anything else. And um, my health hit a point. I've had a couple of rare, I have a rare genetic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, right. It affects 5% of the United States population. 1% are disabled by it completely. So it's it's a pretty, it's a pretty terrible disease. It causes all kinds of problems, joint dislocation, organ rupture, GI issues, early death, uh, osteoarthritis, arthritis, early, basically early aging in the whole body process. Um, so uh, I, the other one I have is intracranial hypertension, which is I make too much spinal fluid, and it basically feels like sticking a high-pressure water hose in the back of my skull and turning it on. It causes blindness, deafness, problems walking, problems with speech. It's basically like having a brain tumor symptoms with no tumor. Uh, the only treatment is two medications, Diamox and Lasix, which are harmful to the kidneys and cause really horrible problems, and brain surgery, where they implant either a lumbar shunt or a BP shunt, which goes in the brain. Uh, which is dangerous. It's brain surgery. Um, and they tell you when you get diagnosed with it that the first surgery, you're shaking hands with brain surgery for the rest of your life. Um, so it's scary. So um, I hit a point um, that everything was kind of colliding all at once. I was up at John Hopkins. I've been to UCLA. I've, I've seen some of the best doctors in the country. And they all said, you need to accept where you're at. There's not a whole lot more we can do. Why don't you go back to the West Coast? They have cannabis. Give it a try. And I laughed at wow. them and I was like, well, what is that supposed to do for me? What, what, what kind of hope is that? Because I didn't know anything about it. So I came back home, got a card, tried to navigate the system, found it really complicated and difficult to get a straight answer or understand what was going on, misinformation a lot. I, I just didn't know. So I gave up on that. I was like, whatever. If I had it, it helped my nausea just a little bit. But I didn't understand the healing properties of it yet. Uh, fast forward, I had uh, four brain surgeries in 36 days in 2013, ended up with a staph infection and uh, the shunt was breaking. It was just, it was, it was a whole bunch of problems. So I, um, I, I hit, I hit the end. They, I, I gave up on treatment. I said, don't touch me anymore. I, I just don't want to do this. And they sent me home and I had a DNR in place and I, I just was done. I was having seizures. I, I couldn't do it anymore. I, my fight was gone. And I was trying to sell the computer on Craigslist and just pay for rent because I, I, I didn't have money. I'd been broke from being sick for so long. And uh, someone reached out and we started talking about health and the computer never actually got bought, which whatever. <laughs> but uh, he talked about this oil and I was like, dude, whatever. Like you're selling me snake oil. I, I, I don't even want to hear it. Like I, I'm done. I, I've seen the best, you know, you don't know anything. And he was persistent and I'm glad he was. Um, I tried it, but the deal was, was that I had to rip up my DNR and the only goal at this point was to make me sleep just a little bit better through the evening and give me a little bit more pain relief just in the end. What ended up happening was I started rapidly getting better. I'd wake up every morning and my hand worked a little better. I could pick up a wow. fork, I could pick up the phone, having a conversation was, was tolerable. I, I could walk a little further every day. And so I started to push myself just a little more every day to try to work through it. Just still not sure what was doing it, but but faithful that, okay, something's working, so let's keep going. The seizures eventually went away. I'm now one and a half, just one and a half years seizure free now. Wow, this um, incredible story. It's, I, yeah, 22 meds I got off. Uh, I lost 80 pounds. I am getting off social services. I got off food stamps. I just got my first place. I'm on my own completely, no caregiver, no anything. I'm working full time for the first time in this entire experience. I'm literally, it's like its like being 18, graduating high school and you have the world at your feet. I'm like there now at 26. And um, I've been working with Canologics uh, for a while because of how much they've done for me. 
so well. This this story, there's so much to it, and I'd love to bring you on. We have a show, Nurse Talk, and I'd love oh, wow. to have Nurse Julesy here to also interview. This story is very, very compelling. Um, but you were you were leading into Canologics, and I want to know more, and our viewers want to know more. Uh, tell me about it, who's involved, and why you got involved, and what you're doing now. What is it all about? Uh, Canologics Foundation is a nonprofit volunteer run. It's for patients by patients. We're all patients ourselves, and all require cannabis to function. And in navigating the system as it's changing today, um, there's a lot of problems. Cannabis is is a human rights issue and affects all paths of life and whether you see it or not it's the truth um, so canologics has been a bridge and an access point for patients for quite a while now some of our founders were the original Oregon medical marijuana program they started the program they are they are the people that, ha that have given life to, to Oregon essentially so canologics what we do is we work with pushing responsible legislative change helping get medical laws passed working with growers and caregivers and patients on education getting them getting problems sorted out we, we, we do compliance within our own industry to create a, a different body Bar, a higher bar to standards yes high, exactly right? exactly and um, in the end it comes down to it's getting the best quality medication for the Absolutely. patient but also removing the barriers that inhibits that patient from living the life that they're intended to live our bottom line from day one has been our, our is patients patient wellness that's it